Hi, I'm Allie. Join me as I show you how to work with the wire and some jump rings making this Making Waves Cha Cha necklace in a fun variety of blues, but you can do it in any color. Watch the whole video to show some opening closing techniques and what I suggest for the end of the design as well. If you need any materials, don't forget to look below the video in the description. We have everything listed there for you to clink, click to get back to our website to check out all of our materials. Gather everything up and let's get started. So to get started on our Making Waves necklace, you can see that I've already started the chain link portion and I'm gonna go in and tell you why we're using what we're using, but you wanna use some jump rings or closed rings even, a couple smaller beads to hang down from the cha-cha sections, as well as some bigger beads for the focal. So I have six millimeter mermaid, eight millimeter uh, mirrored disco balls, and then some three, four millimeter melons, along with some crystals in three and four millimeter and we're going to be using these all in conjunction with one another. Using 26 gauge wire, and this is a titanium, which is gonna be a little bit more of a gunmetal color, kind of that uh, darker silver. And we also have here some one millimeter gunmetal head pins. So I'm going through and creating a chain link design. Now, why am I not linking the wire directly together? Because we're gonna be hanging down little charms or little cha-chas from the rings themselves. This is going to allow them to hang down at the same level and also just the necklace to lay a little bit better as it's laying on your neck. I have a round nose pliers, wire cutter, and my needle nose pliers here. The first thing I'm going to do is show you how to make our links. So it's very, very simple. I'm taking a piece of the 26 gauge wire, and normally I'm gonna be working with about 10 or so inches that I cut off the spool. We're going to grab our round nose pliers, and we're gonna hold about three fourths of an inch down on the wire. You can see that I show both of the both the wire and the pliers, but you only see one jaw of the pliers. The reason for that is because we're going to bend the wire back 90 degrees. That's gonna give us that 90 degree turn that we want. And also that shows us then both jaws of the pliers. We wanna see both jaws, one over the top of the other. From there, the wire is gonna go over top of the round nose pliers and hit when we get to the other side. When we get to the other side, we're gonna switch from the top jaw that we're currently on to the bottom jaw of those pliers, and then we're gonna take the wire back 90 degrees. That's making what's called an eye pin. The eye pin is going to be at the bottom and the top of the link section that we link onto the jump rings. Now, I'm not going through and taking the jump rings and opening them. I'm keeping them closed. I don't wanna open them because they can then open, but these are a good sturdy 20 gauge five millimeter ring. From here, I'm gonna take my ring whether or not I'm attaching onto a piece that I've already completed or whether I'm not starting new, I'm gonna pop that ring in between that loop that I just made that eye pin. Go ahead then and grab with your needle nose pliers. Let that eye pin lay down. Hold basically that little loop and leave the wire that's crossing over outside of those pliers. From there, while we're holding the head of our eye pin, we're gonna let our man lay down in bed and we're gonna wrap that scarf that we have around his neck. And we're gonna do it three times. For this design, the reason I'm using 26 gauge wire is because I want my gun metal, gun metal jump rings to be the focus. If you want to, you can do this even with a hole up to 22 or even 20 if you want it to be thicker, but you could use anything if you have on hand from uh, 22 down to 26 gauge. Take your wires cutter and cut off the extra little wire there. Grab your next bead. I'm using three beads in my rotation. So I have my melon, my mirrored disco ball in the eight, and then I have my six millimeter mermaid glass. So the next thing in my order is going to be my melon. I'm then gonna grab with my round nose pliers, just like we did previously, where the wire's coming out of the top. And then from the bottom here, I can see just one jaw of my pliers leaving about an eighth of an inch there and turning back to the side. Once again, we get into that 90 degree angle. I'm gonna bring the wire then that I can see both jaws and that straight piece is coming straight out from the back. I'm gonna bend it over the top of the round nose pliers, switch from that top jaw to the bottom jaw. You can see that I just rotating the pliers. If that switches you up a little bit, you can take it off and move it to the bottom jaw. Take that back to 90 degrees, so we're starting and ending with that 90 degree, and we're making our link, which is that two eye pins on the side. 
Now we're gonna coil this eye pin just like we did previously. Prior to doing so, grab one of your rings, and if you forget a ring, it does open. Drop that into that loop. Once again, grab that loop that you just made with your needle nose pliers, and then go ahead and coil around. Now I like three coils. That's the look that I like to go for. And then after my three coils, I'm gonna go in with my wire cutter and cut that extra wire down. Now you can see I've already done a whole 16 inches of this design going in order, creating those beads. I can stop if I want to, and that's a beautiful then just wrap bracelet or even an independent necklace on its own. But what we're gonna do is have a little fun. And we're gonna make our waves dance a little bit by going in and having some of that cha-cha design using some head pins to make more eye pins that are gonna hang down from the design in between each one of our rings. So we're gonna make a bunch of these and I'm gonna do three for each that hang down and make it look a little bit like a charm and have those waves kind of moving. So we are going in now and loading up the head pins. What you're gonna to wanna to do is count how many of your jump rings you have on the design. Count them up and that's how many of the head pins you're going to want to work for work with. And I'll show you how it's good to make these all kind of at the same time and in a progression. So go ahead and count up your jump rings and then we're gonna get ready with our head pins and with whatever bead you want first as part of your cha-cha design. Once you have your count of the number of beads that you want to hang down, again, I'm doing three hanging down on each one of my jump rings. I know that I have 21. I have 23 total jump rings, but I'm not gonna use any, or 25 total jump rings. I'm not gonna use any on the very last two here at the end hanging down. It's gonna be easier to put my clasp on if I leave those two open and empty. So I have my first set of beads that I wanna hang down, which is one of my melon beads and then one of my two millimeter dark sapphire crystals. And what I'm going to do is use one plier at a time. So I have on here my head pins, 21 of those, exactly what I want and need. And I've done a couple so you can see how it looks when it's mass done. And the first thing I'm gonna do is grab my needle nose pliers. And this time we are not going to be coiling. We're just turning over the loop. So I'm grabbing fairly close to the end of my bead there. And I'm going to literally turn it into that 90 degree turn. Pick up the rest. And here's where we could fast forward. Ba -ba -da -ba -da. You're just watching me going through here, turning all of those to the side. After we turn these on to the side then, we're gonna grab our wire cutter. And the next thing we're gonna do with our wire cutter, and make sure you're leaving yourself enough space that you're not cracking your crystal. But we don't want a ton of extra space above because we're not coiling, we don't need that extra space. After you have all of these turned, we're going to put down our needle nose pliers and we're gonna grab our cutter. So this is a little bit differently than going in with our round nose pliers and bringing it over the top. We're gonna leave ourselves right about that amount of space. So if you're a person that, you know, you need all of those measurements, you can look and see, all right, how long am I holding it? It's there about uh, right there, a little bit less than a half an inch, a little bit more than a quarter of an inch. And I know that I'm going to consistently cut there. Now, how do I know how much to cut off and how much to leave? I know that based on the size loop that I want. So you might have to do a couple trials where you look and see what size you want to cut these down to. That's one of the reasons that I'm using the one inch head pins and don't want them to be super long because I know I'm not making super long dangles. So there are different size head pins. Usually in most jewelry making kits or anything, you'll have a one and a half or a two inch. These are a little bit shorter than that. You can certainly use whatever size you want. Just make sure that you have enough there that you are trimming down. And then once we have that all trimmed down and you can see I'm using my fingers to kind of hold that so it doesn't fly across the room and we get those all down. Then the next thing we're gonna do is pick up our round nose pliers. We're gonna pick up the round nose pliers and we're gonna to start to do our turnover loops. All those little scraps then can get pushed to the side and can get tossed out and we're ready to go now with our round nose pliers. Now I know what size this loop is because I've been doing this for years and I kind of eyeball it. If you need to, take a permanent marker and mark exactly where you're holding. And then also you can mark exactly where the length is that you need. I'm gonna go in here then, hold at the very end where I can see the wire, but I can't feel it. And I'm gonna go in and we're going to literally round it out. 
So I'm just gonna pull the wire around the top and we're gonna round out that eye pin so it sits directly over the top. So again, going in here, holding at the end and then rounding out. So you can see when you do this in that fluid motion where you're doing one plier or one tool at a time, it goes pretty quick. So I'm gonna make 21 of this style. Then I already have the next one ready to go with a two millimeter on the bottom and a four millimeter on the top. And then one more where I'm just gonna use just those four millimeter beads and that four millimeter crystals. So I've got 21 to do three times. So I'm looking at 63 of these little head pins to go. And then I'll show you the quickest way to ensemble or assemble your cha-cha breaking waves necklace. Once you have your multitude of head pins all completed, it's time to assemble the necklace. Now you could say, why did we not assemble this all and just do a bunch of lengths? I like to see the design and that way I can see exactly what I'm thinking. Plus I don't like to open the jump ring multiple times. We're gonna open it one time to add all of our beads and make sure that we're adding it in the same direction. So we're gonna go through as we're doing this and kind of make sure our links match each other and that we're adding it to one side. When you open your jump ring, you wanna make sure that you are also closing it. So you wanna find the opening in the jump ring. You wanna pull that open right at where the opening is. You're going to add your three cha-cha beads. One, two, and then every other one, I have one of these going, and then another one, I have the plain crystal. So actually, I'll start off with a plain crystal. Once you have those three on, you're gonna close up that jump ring. Now, how to close up the jump ring, and I know it's hard to see right here because it is small, but you wanna take it back past where you think it's gonna be closed, and then it'll spring shut a little bit. And we're gonna hang them all from the same area of the hook, of the loop. We're gonna also make sure that all of those rings are closed when you're working with it. So if this is your jump ring, and we open up the jump ring by pushing to the side, rather than pulling back open, we're sliding it to the side to open it. You wanna make sure when you close it that you go back past where you think it's gonna be shut and it'll kind of spring back closed. So the next one here, we're gonna lay down. We're gonna open it so that it's opening in the same area. Grab here so that way all the beads hang from the same direction. Find your opening so you can kind of spin it if you need to. Look down on it, find that opening, slide it open to the side, and now you grab your next collection of beads one of the one style, another one of our round, and another one of our third style. Once again, close that up, going past where you think it's gonna be closed and you won't be able to see the open then, and on to the next one. So there's our second. I'm gonna continue adding on to all of the rings my three beads, one of my one style, one of the other style, and then alternating from the other two. Once you're finished putting on all of your little charm pieces, it's time to add a clasp. I'm gonna add a little toggle. That way I can wear that in the front if I want to as well. And I'm just going to go in and open up my last little loop here. Slide on my toggle bar. And I'm not gonna put any extra little charms near my toggle bar. I'm gonna wait to add those near my toggle loop. So I'm gonna put those on there. Put on my toggle loop. And then I'm gonna put on any remaining charms since I can't count and made too many of a couple different styles. Close that up, make sure it's nice and tightly closed. And then you have your fun little toggle that you can wear to the front or to the back of the design as you have that nice cha-cha look. Thanks so much for joining me in this Making Waves Cha-Cha Necklace. It's super fun to put together all different color combinations, sizes and shapes of beads, and work with wire, jump rings, and head pins with some fundamentals to make this design. Remember, if you wanna make this design or wanna see what materials were included and get lists of all of those, go ahead below the video and look in the description. We'll put a link there to our website to get you all that information that you need. Remember, if you haven't already, go ahead and hit that subscribe button so you don't miss anything from us at Potomac Beads. As always, comments help to let us know we're on the right track or to help out other Potomac Beaters that may be watching this video. Thanks so much for watching and enjoy and get ready for our next inspirational design.